Welcome to The Note, I'm Ashley. It is Friday, that means we're just inching closer and closer and closer to the weekend. I don't know about you guys, I'm gonna be playing an awful lot of Guacamelee 2. I already have an angry thumb from getting really frustrated <laughs> playing that game, but it's not gonna stop me. Uh, anyway, before we get to the weekend, we do have a few last news items to cover. We still don't have a release date for Cyberpunk 2077, but the game has hit an important development marker. It is now playable start to finish. And that means some people in the world, they're developers, but they're still people, have been able to play through the story of cyberpunk. That's pretty amazing. In Gadget Reports, there was a demo of the game at Gamescom, and it was pretty close to the one CD Projekt Red showed off at E3. But the Gamescom demo featured a new katana weapon and also showed off the character selection process that allows you to customize your character and their backstory. And while producer Richard Borchomowski said the game is playable from start to finish, he said it doesn't have all the assets in place. It sounds like there is still tons of playtesting to be done, bugs to be fixed, better so much side stuff to be added. I mean, it's a CD Projekt Red game, right? Still though, it's a promising sign, maybe an indication, of, hey guys, we're gonna see this game before 2077, so we can just let that joke rest. Some sad news to report, unfortunately. It looks like one of the most popular characters in the Destiny franchise is dead. Like, dead. At Gamescom, developer Bungie showed a heartbreaking cinematic of Cade 6 dying at the hands of a horde of fallen troops, but not before he took several with him, because he's a badass to the very end. The story is part of Destiny 2's newest expansion, Forsaken, which is launching September 4th, along with a bunch of new features and a new Gambit mode that combines PvP and PvE aspects. As far as Cade 6 goes, lots of fans don't believe he's, like, actually dead, dead, despite Bungie's insistence, because how do you kill off Cade 6, guys, huh? Uh, but if you haven't seen the clip, it is really well done. Highly recommend checking it out. I mean, it's been a rough time for game characters. First, <sighs> Luigi, RIP, and now this. Good news, there is some good news. It looks like humanity is still better than robots at Dota 2, so even if everyone's dying in Destiny 2, we'll just hop on over to Dota 2 and at least be better than our robot overlords. Mm -hmm. While a bot team from the research company OpenAI has racked up some wins against previous groups of Dota 2 players, it recently had its toughest contest yet at Gamescom, squaring off against a team of pros from Brazil named pain. And it took nearly an hour, but Wired reports that <laughs> they did indeed bring the pain. The human team won decisively. AI researcher Mike Cook watched the match and tweeted that the bots are still very good at moment to moment, but they seem bad at macro level decisions. Of course, bots have already beaten a lot of very, very good, much better than most of us uh, players in a number of games ranging from chess to go. MOBAs like Dota 2, though, are considered tougher for AI because there are multiple players and obviously a lot of teamwork and coordination involved. So, probably just a matter of time before they come out on top in Dota 2 as well. But hey, let's live in the moment. Humans rule. Is Anthem better as a multiplayer game or a single player game? Bioware showed off a demo of the game at Gamescom and interestingly, it was only playable in multiplayer, even though at E3 just a few months ago, they were saying that it was primarily a single player game, which gets confusing. A VGT47 asked the game's director, Jonathan Warner, if the game is worse if you play solo, to which he replied, the experience is different, but I don't feel like it's lesser but it definitely sounds like multiplayer is Warner's preferred way to go. He added, personally, I've played it for a long time and I feel the real magic of the game is when you're playing with the squad because then you can pull off combos when you see someone zooming over your head in a Colossus, there's a moment of, oh shit, I love that. The game is releasing next year, February 22nd for PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. So as we march closer and closer to release, hopefully some of the confusion around what the game is and isn't will be cleared up. After all these years, the Wii, still getting new games. It really is. Well, one new game. THQ Nordic announced at Gamescom the latest game in the singing franchise, Let's Sing 2019, is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Wii, which m might be a little bit weird considering the Wii has been out of production for years. They're not even being made, but the reality is there are a lot of those consoles still floating around. And this has happened before with other older consoles. They kept making FIFA games for PlayStation 2 until finally calling it quits with FIFA 14. THQ Nordic didn't give a reason as to why they're putting the game out for Wii specifically, but it just goes to show there's a base there. And if so, developers, they're gonna keep making games for that platform, even if it's really, really old. But let's be honest, let's sing. We're probably not the main demographic for that. It's the people that still have their Wii out and like around. 
If you played GoldenEye with friends back in the day on Nintendo 64, you probably remember someone saying something like, no odd job, and the reason for that was very obvious. He was the shortest character, which made him harder to hit. And now, there have been, look, there were a lot of arguments around that whole thing, like is that cheating, is that not cheating? It's taken a while, but the developers finally have admitted that, you know what, yeah, playing odd job is cheating. In an interview with Mel Magazine about the history of the game, GoldenEye's lead environment artist, Carl Hilton, talked about development of the game and said, we all thought it was kind of cheating when we were playtesting with Oddjob, but it was too much fun to take out and there was no impetus for many of us to change it. Meanwhile, gameplay programmer Mark Edmonds made it a little bit more definitive saying, it's definitely cheating to play as Oddjob. So, it's taken a while, but we finally have our answer. Looks like Fortnite may be starting to cool down just a little bit on the momentum. At this point, everyone in the world plays it, it's harder to find new people. <laughs> Super Data reports that the Battle Royale game's revenue is starting to taper off after months and months of insane growth. Its revenue for July was up only 2% from June, so it is still growing a little bit, but that's way slower than previous months and it would regularly grow in the double digits. Super Data added that the game's growth was modest despite Epic releasing Season 5 of the game's Battle Pass midway through the month. Meanwhile, other learnings, No Man's Sky had its best month revenue-wise since it launched in 2016. Superdata said the game made $24 million across all platforms for the weeks after the next update came out. And keep in mind as well, the next update was free, which means that these are all new consumers coming into that game. The game also had more than 2 million active players in July, which was 10 times larger than the previous month. So great recovery for that game. I was one of those statistics. Blackish creator Kenya Barris is rebooting classic 60s sitcom Bewitched for ABC. Now, Barris has been tempted over to Netflix, presumably by something like, oh, I don't know, a giant pile of money, but was able to set this up at ABC before that deal goes into effect. Barris is going to produce and co-write the pilot with his Blackish collaborator, Yamara Taylor. Bewitched was about, if you missed it when it was uh, on the air, a happy young couple who just have one little problem. The wife's a witch. So is the mother-in-law, but that's, you know, typical, right? <laughs> the original series ran for eight years. Barris's take is gonna modernize the concept, making it an interracial couple and highlighting that even if a black woman is literally magical, she's still a step behind the average white guy in wow, just about every facet of life. This has been an increasing trend. It seems like there's a, uh, well, not exactly the same, but there's the Charmed reboot that I'm not sure how I feel about, but there are a lot of different series. Yo, they're all witches. Sabrina is also getting like a, a gritty reboot. Everyone's going for the witches and everyone's trying to like modernize all these old franchises. Let's go for Green Acres next. What do you say? <laughs> uh, the internet was on fire yesterday, speculating about what the future of 007 is going to be as producers scramble to figure out what the 25th Bond film is going to look like after the surprise departure of director Danny Boyle over, quote, creative differences. Some stories suggested the film wasn't going to make its November 2019 release date because well, it needs to get into production pretty soon. Some stories say the producers are looking for a quick turnaround and are planning on keeping the date, but one story kind of flew under the radar and in our opinion, it's maybe the most interesting. Deadline kind of buried the lead in their piece about the release date when they threw out this tidbit. Apparently, the producers are talking seriously about bringing Edgar Wright into direct. Now, I mean, now that you've heard the name Edgar Wright associated with James Bond, like, this is what you want to see, right? Come on! And now Wright is coming off his biggest success yet with Baby Driver, but keep in mind that whoever's coming in to direct the next Bond movie is likely going to have to work off an already existing script and not have a whole lot of prep time, which puts them in a difficult position. And considering Wright himself walked away from a really big franchise, Ant-Man, um, over creative differences as well, he may not be too keen to jump into this situation as it is, However, he has been on record in the past about wanting to direct a Bond movie one day and was in consideration to helm Bond 25 before Danny Boyle came on board. So, maybe? Right, it's not the only name on the list though. Deadline also mentioned David McKenzie, who just did Hell or High Water, uh, Yann Demange, who made the upcoming White Boy Rick with Matthew McConaughey, our favorite, uh, and John Mark Valley, who made the Oscar-winning Dallas Buyers Club and was behind the series Big Little Lies and Sharp Objects, with whom, which have both been doing really well for HBO. Look, all those people, they're very, very talented, but Come on, Edgar Wright would be amazing. Plus he's directed a couple former Bonds already. A Pierce Brosnan was in The World's End and Timothy Dalton played a very memorable part in his Shaun of the Dead follow-up. Hot Fuzz, one of my favorite movies ever. Just watched it again recently. I love that movie. Come on, Wright would be great. Do it, Wright, do it. 
All right, that about wraps up the news for the week. Let us know what you think of all these updates in the comments down below to make sure you get all the crazy news from every corner of the internet every weekday. Like this video, and if you're new here, subscribe to The Know. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. Wow. <laughs> this is gonna be a rough one. I heard you got a rough one the other day, Brian. Caden said you requested like the full minute of bloopers for the website version. It was, it was, yeah, not one of my best. <laughs> <laughs>